You're watching live with Apostle Chad Collins. Be healed now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Apostle Chad Collins, the friend of God. He breathed on his disciples and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And they received new life, the spirit of regeneration. A sickness with a death warrant is trying to take her, but I bind it in the realm of the spirit. I see people playing tennis, but they're playing on the clay court. You come from a place called clay. Clay, Kentucky. That's your hand. I lose that fire now. In Jesus' name. It's my fall of the fire. Touch. We lose that fire. Join us now with Apostle Chad Collins. Look at my shadow. That's power right there. Look at it. Hey there, it's Omega. I'm going to show you how to stay connected and get instant updates by subscribing to Apostle Chad Collins on YouTube. All right, let's do it. It's very simple. All you have to do is use your web browser, open up your YouTube app, and type in Apostle Chad Collins Miracle Life. Apostle Chad Collins Miracle Life. Make sure you put in Miracle Life on the end because you may come across some old Apostle Chad Collins videos from the past, but we want you to subscribe to the most recent page. Once you've typed all that in, you'll find Apostle Chad Collins Miracle Life. Click the subscribe button right next to it make sure that you click the notification bell yep that's right click the notification bell and make sure you get all notifications and it's that simple well thanks for tuning in see you next time bye hallelujah hallelujah praise god welcome to the broadcast with me, Apostle Chad Collins. We are live, hey, and don't hey, I'm in a different location, hey, amen. We are, I'm actually in our new admin building here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. So we haven't have a, we don't have everything decorated yet. So, but I am so excited to be with you tonight. Remember, this is live Tuesday night with me. It's going to be a powerful word of God tonight. I also I have some somebody special, a special guest. Those that are part of Miracle Life will recognize this guest. This is sort of last minute. Um, this person shared a supernatural visitation from the Lord and, I, and this in my heart, the Lord said, no, you know what? You need to get her on the broadcast. So uh, first of all, let me check everything. Make sure we're streaming. Okay. How's everything looking? If it's looking good, give me thumbs up. Those that's watching. Remember on Tuesday nights, I don't have my media team. I kind of run everything by myself individually. So, uh, I'm looking at my phone now, making sure that the stream is good. looks like we might have a little sticking there. If not, let me know how we looking. Those that's on the media team, maybe Gretchen, Omega, uh, give me some feedback in the in the um, comments. Let me know if the stream is okay, if the sound is okay. I need to know that. Let me know right away. Sounds good, looking good. Thanks, Tamara. I appreciate that. Thanks, Bonnie, Ray. Thumbs up. A couple more of you. Now, remember, on this broadcast on Tuesday nights, we stream through several platforms. So we're on about 10 platforms tonight. I think it's um, uh, eight uh, Facebook pages, YouTube, and Twitter. Now, we've been having some issues sometimes with the Twitter connection. So we may not be flowing on Twitter. Twitter sometimes um, doesn't always jive well with, our, um, uh, with the uh, application that we're using. But be as it may. You're watching a global broadcast. I'm going to give a shout out to those that's watching in Africa. God bless you. Some of our sons in ministry. God has really been blessing them, increasing the churches. It's been awesome. It's been tremendous. I look forward to getting back to Africa prayerfully in the next few years or maybe even sooner. Uh, but also, I want to give a shout out to everyone that's watching, particularly Miracle Life. God bless you. Uh, uh, I oversee two churches in the Kentucky area, uh, Louisville, Kentucky, Miracle Life. 
Uh, we run our Sunday services at 10.30 a.m. And then Miracle Life uh, Bowling Green, which is 3.30 p.m. Sunday afternoon Central Time. We travel back and forth. So either service you need to get in the house. If you're in the Nashville, Tennessee, uh, uh, southwestern part of the state, anywhere around there, you need to come join us in person. If you've never seen the miraculous power, if you've never experienced the glory of God, if you've never seen a prophetic service, a genuine, authentic miracle service, you have to be at our services uh, at any time. There's other things we're going to be doing here soon. Also, I'm going to be uh, uh, next weekend. I'm going to reach out to pastor if he's not watching uh, in New Jersey. We're gonna, I'm going to be in New Jersey next week, me and First Lady, amen, for the weekend ministering up in New Jersey, Edison, New Jersey. So I'm telling you, God is visiting the New York, New Jersey area just like he's visiting the Kentucky area. So again, I'm excited about that. There's nobody like Jesus. So again, it looks like we're having a pretty good signal here. I'm a little concerned. It looks like it has a little freeze to it. Gretchen, I need you to let me know something because I, I want to hear it from you because you're the media person. If you're on, give me something in the, in the, in the comments there. Everyone else is giving me thumbs up, but I need to hear from you all to let me know. So again, I'm excited about what Jesus is doing. God is moving supernaturally. Amen. There's nobody like Jesus tonight. I'm going to share a powerful word tonight uh, about a time of visitation. Again, I'm still trying to get my stream together. It looks like we may be doing all right. Maybe they're not on here. I thought I saw Gretchen on here, but maybe it's not coming through. But God is, I'm telling you, I'm excited about what Abba is going to be doing tonight. I had a powerful, I think it was a dream. Sometime at night I have dream, I have a vision. Sometime I'm asleep, sometime I'm awake. But a powerful, powerful uh, revelation of, of Abba. I heard the Lord say Abba to me last night. So it just is fresh on my spirit. So a lot of times I say, God, I say, Father, tonight, you may hear me say a lot. I may be referring to him as Abba. And it's just something the Lord is, is dealing with me about. I'm going to do a teaching on that and really begin to get into why we call him Abba. But tonight we're going to talk about a time of visitation. I want you to get everybody on uh, the live stream. Hey, Amen. let me check out the sound myself. I'm not hearing from the media team. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the best stream. Looks like we having some little bit delays. Hopefully uh, we don't lose you. I'm, I'm noticing because I'm going to bring in another call and I'm a little concerned about putting stress on the app. Not sure what's happening. I'm in a different location. So I, I believe y'all hear me. Okay. But I'm just hoping that it will, it will. We'll just believe God, not hope. We'll just believe God and put our faith that the stream will continue to stay strong. But right now I'm a little concerned how it actually is streaming at this point. There's a little breakage in there. Can y'all see that? Hallelujah. So again, not to belabor that or dwell on that too much. Uh, just again, come on in the room, share 10, tell at least 10 people about what we're doing. Amen. About what's happening in the name of Jesus. Praise God. There's nobody like Jesus. Amen. How many believe that? Nobody like Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we, it's going to be powerful tonight. You know, the Lord shared with me, those that's watching, that we're in a time of visitation. And uh, I guess my comments are not working. So anyway, I'm having a little bit of issues. Doesn't like, I believe we're still okay. Amen. But a time of visitation, and the Lord is visiting his people supernaturally in this season. I told, I shared with people back in 2009 when I, had, uh, I was caught up above the clouds and I saw the Father sitting on the throne. And the Lord said John to me. And from that point, the Lord was telling me that the church is entering into a time of visitation. There's only been two times of visita uh, visitation since the history of mankind. And believe me, we are entering into that type of dynamic because we are approaching the coming of the Lord. So you got to understand that we are approaching the time of the coming of the Lord. So it's going to be greater than revival. Now, if you use the term revival, I mean, that's okay. It's not like that's incorrect, but we're moving to something greater than revival. We're moving into a time of visitation. So again, I'm excited about the Lord and what he's going to do in this season and this time. Hallelujah. Now, make sure you continue to comment and continue to share the broadcast. We love positive, upbeat comments and continue to praise the Lord. Now, I'm going to attempt. Now, if I have to restart the stream, I apologize, but I think we're doing okay. Uh, it's, again, it seems like it's a little shaky. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I'm not getting any feedback of what's happening, but it looks like we're okay. Yeah, it's a little bit sticky. That's what I, I needed to hear from her. Okay, but it's still running. 
Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Now, so we'll just keep going. I'm not sure why it's sticky in a different location, but to God be the glory. <laughs> the cable man or the internet man will get a phone call tomorrow. Hallelujah. Now, again, uh, and I'll joke aside, let's get right into the broadcast and talk about a time of visitation. God is moving supernaturally. I got a special guest that all of you at Miracle Life will know. You're going to be surprised to see her, but she has been a part of our ministry just as long as anybody, probably seven or eight years. She basically is our, our director, of, of, of administrative director. She handles a lot of the things in the ministries. She's literally a daughter in the, in the things of the kingdom. She's a daughter of the Lord to me. And I'm telling you, there's been some mighty visitations from her, uh, from Jesus. And the Lord literally gave her another visitation. I believe it was last night. And she, she texts me, she'll do that no agenda. She just wants to let me know. And, and I said, you know, right on the spot. I said, I, I'm doing a live broadcast. I want you on there. And so we're going to bring her in again. It's a little sticky with our string. Y'all pray that it holds up so we can share this. And I want you all to support this. our sister because it's powerful. Now, I know many of you are getting visitations and experiencing, but I mean, you know, when I do things, I'm led of the Lord. I don't open doors and platforms and all those kind of things just to be doing things. Everything has a divine purpose. So I know the the Lord really led me to do this tonight. So I'm going to bring her in the screen. Amen. And she's going to share. And we're going to talk a little bit about visitation. Praise God. There's nobody like Jesus. Amen. And there she is. Glory to God. God hey, everybody. <laughs> God bless you, Minister Cassandra. Uh, she has a powerful prophetic call on her life. She literally has the mantle of a prophetess. And she's moving into that. And I've, 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 I don't know if I've known anybody in the world, right, that has as many experiences with the Lord on a regular basis. That's just a testimony of what God is doing. Now, I don't know if y'all can hear outside, but I'm kind of, I'm sitting in the area where there's sirens going by, fire department, amen, but this is kind of spare the moment. But it looks like her stream is doing well, so it looks like your internet provider is better than mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, praise <laughs> so Cassandra, tell them, those that's watching, of course, Miracle Life knows you, but a lot of people don't know who you are, but uh, I've kind of given you an introduction a little bit, but let's just get right into it because this is a time of visitation. Tell me about, you sent me, I believe it was a text this, to, this morning or sometime today about, I had announced by the spirit of God. Now we've had several people had angelic activity, different things happening. Tell me about what happened. Was it last night? It was last night. <laughs> Amen. So I'll just jump right on into it. But yes. one thing I want to say to get started, Apostle, is since you announced that Miracle Life is moving into a time of visitation, I've had two visitations from the Lord so far by dream. Two. Wow. That's not even counting the times that I've seen him in closed vision. So yes. it's just an awesome time for Miracle Life. And I'm just so excited to be able to share what God is doing. Yes. So this morning, it was last night, this morning, somewhere around that time frame, um, I had a dream. So in the dream, Jesus came to me and I noticed a couple of different things about Jesus. One is that he was extremely tall. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I think this is the first time that I've seen him be so tall in yeah. a dream. And then the second thing was, it's, it's pretty hard to describe, but I'll try to do my best, is that he looked like all people groups. Yeah. It's so hard to put into words, Apostle. I've sure. literally never seen him like that before, ever. So yes. it was extremely surprising to me. But honestly, I was in awe just to see him that way. So he looked like all people groups. And I can remember in the dream, there were a few people that were standing beside me, but I didn't recognize who they were. And so I looked at Jesus and I said, Jesus, doesn't the word say, blessed are those who believe but have yet to see? And he said to me without moving his mouth, he said, you are right. And it was as if in that moment, I just knew that there was supposed to be more people there. And I knew that they they didn't necessarily believe and they weren't ready for his return. And mm. that was the end of the dream. Wow. So you could tell in the dream. See, many people, let's, let's go through some of that because everything, mm -hmm. he does things in, in sim, with symbolic value. So you have seen him before in his natural form and so forth. So you knew when he appeared to you, it was like 
you saw in him all people groups, like what we would call all races. Yes. And it's and it's interesting that the God showed you that because I said one of the characteristics of the visitation of the Lord is that he begins to visit all people groups. In other words, he, he begins to bring people of every nation, every kindred and every tongue. And that's why I've said before in 2020, the seriousness of any type of racism or bias or prejudice, regardless of people say they, 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 they oh, it, it doesn't exist. God said it did. So even though 2020, a lot of the movement was handled by the world, I said that God would, because the church did not and would not address it, he would take the world as a tool and chasten the church. And many times God would do that in the Old Testament, what he would do if we didn't obey him like Israel, he would turn them over to their enemies. And he would use that, if you will, as a form of, Ch chastisement or correction or judgment. So God has to deal with because when you when I, when Moses when it came out of Egypt, the Bible says that a mixed multitude came out. So even from the very beginning of visitation, that was there. We see the second visitation on the day of Pentecost under the ministry of Jesus. After he rose from the dead, J Jesus brought it in, and then it went into the first generation of the apostles. And we see every kindred and every tongue. So you probably don't even think of that. That's why the Lord appeared to you and to confirm the word that he that when he visits, he's come for all people. So any group, a lot of people don't understand and they think, well, maybe, you know, God, he will address it, though. Any people group, for example, if it's African-Americans, if they're discriminated against, he will address it. That's just people don't think he will, but he will. He, he is God. He, he doesn't care. He will. He doesn't have to apologize. He will. And the reason why he does that is because he is the God of all people. So God, so what is happening, that's happening because one thing in miracle life, that's one thing we stress uh, that we are a people of all people, of every background, not only black, white, amen, and, and everything in between, but rural city, country, oh, we all have come together for one common cause. That's the glory of Jesus and the love of God. Amen. So that's a big deal to God. It's like huge to God. Hallelujah. I'm looking at the internet, Cassandra. looks like I'm freezing up pretty good. Hopefully my sound is coming through. Is my sound coming through? Amen. Yeah. So Amen. long as you can hear me, I, it's, it's like I'm freezing, but keep, I'm, I'm going to keep going. So uh, prayerfully we can, we can keep this going. Amen. But it looks like it's working fine on your part. So that's actually good for me. So I know what to address <laughs> to get this fixed. So with that said, a time of visitation is so powerful. Now, that's only the, the foundation. But then, of course, the, the next thing is that angelic activity, supernatural manifestations like never before on realms that has never been experienced on a consistent level throughout history, even the modern history of the church. You, you, there's been a few people who's tapped into some things, visitation. There was a, some been some some prophets of old who had these kind of encounters. But this these this time of visitation is not only for individuals such as myself because I'm a face to face apostle. The Lord comes to me a lot. I see lots of angels. That's been from the very beginning of my ministry. But this time of visitation is for the body of Christ. The first visitation. Uh, it was through the ministry of Moses, the second visitation, the ministry of Jesus. Now the host for the third visitation is the church. We are the body of Christ preparing for the second coming or the rapture and the second coming of the Lord. That's why it's significant. It's not because we're, we're so dynamic and we have so much revelation and I'm such a great prophet and all of it. it it's, it's more so that there's some truth to some of that stuff. But the truth of the matter is, it's the time that we're in. Hallelujah. Anyway, you know, I, I want you to continue because that was a powerful, and that was last night, right? Amen. Yeah, it was last night. And you know, that's so powerful, honestly, Apostle, what you said, because I think I went through months of not having a, a visitation or an encounter with the Lord. And I've heard you say before, you know, after a couple of days, it's kind of like, Jesus, like, what's going on? Did I do something wrong? Like, Lord, what did I do? But, you know, it 
it just brings it back to we're in a very specific time of visitation. Mm -hmm. And yes. to me, that's just so powerful. And to have those two encounters already with the Lord, I'm just so excited to see what's next. <laughs> you know, and it's interesting. I want to make some clarification to everyone so they can understand it, because more than one thing can be true as long as it doesn't contradict each other. Let me give an example of what that would be before I say what I'm going to say. Like, for example, I have been in meet some meetings and, 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 and I've heard people say, you know, they're describing me. They say this, that he's kind of tall. Well, I'm six, two, six, two and a half. And right. But however, one time I've been to NBA games before. And one time I was down on the floor. Well, in that setting, if you were describing me, they'd have been like the short guy. I'm not short, but in that context, everybody on that court, I was the shortest guy. But however, in, in, in some settings, I'm one of the taller people. So it's not a contradiction. It's just the context. Amen. Is this right? So the word of God is the same way. So visitation is an era that the church is moving in. But within that era, individual local churches and ministries, it comes to them in cycles. So I don't want to make it sound like a, see, see the people understand that. So we are in another cycle of visitation. Glory to God. Now, why is this so important? Church, it's not just a miracle life thing. No, no, this has not, this is not me. This is for the nations. I believe it's perfect timing. I'm going to New Jersey. God bless those in New Jersey. I'm telling you, it's coming on such another level. It's it's a form of revival, but a greater manifestation. It's like revival, but a million times more powerful. Then the, the distinction is Jesus and the Father themselves working with people in the body of Christ, certain people, generals and people. And, and you know what? It's not even just generals and people that's apostles. It was a perfect example. Even though Minister Cassandra has a prophetic call on her life, amen, it's still not like you're in that ministry full time. So it, it shows you that that's one of the significant signs of the move. Of course, the preliminary things are always there. The word of God, strong understanding and doctrine and foundational truth of God's word, the cross, amen, and the kingdom of God. Of course, that's the foundation. No man could bid on anything. But just like the early church during the time of visitation, we haven't had visitation since the early church. We've had revivals. We've had movements. We've had awakenings, but not visitation. That's why this, this significant part I'm, I'm talking about, because this is the part that, that distinguishes it from the rest of the movements. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Cassandra, real quick, I told you I wasn't going to keep on here real long, but you know what? This is so funny. I'm going to say something funny. My video is so bad. I might just keep you on here. <laughs> I, might, I might take myself off the screen and, and you better have a word. Now, but with that said, yeah, because because I'm my, my screen is over here like I'm just like the robot. It's just all over. <laughs> But at least the volume, I believe the volume is coming through. Now, what I want you to share with real quick, since I got you here, you know, you 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 kind of grew up in the denominational church. You didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit. I mean, the first time you came, it was so amazing. Um, you want to talk about a little a little bit of that, and then uh, really quick, your your first encounter with Jesus on that level. Now, just like she said, blessed are those. Who believe and don't see you don't have to see jesus to be saved if you never see jesus you just as sanctified just as righteous by faith it's not that this is about intimacy it's about being open to what father wants to do in your life and in this season that's all it's being open to whatever the fullness of what god wants to reveal and share with you praise god so if you work aside just share a little bit about that okay sure so whenever i first came to the ministry I just had this desire to know more about God than what I knew. And to me, I was really just in a place of tradition and religion, but I didn't know God was a God that really wants to be experienced, a God yes. of relationship. So that was foreign to me and things of the spirit was foreign to me. I knew nothing about prophesying, about being slain in the spirit, all of that. I'm like, miraculous healing. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. So when I came to Miracle Life, oh my goodness, Apostle, I was like a fish out of water. <laughs> what is this? What is going on? And I can remember thinking when I came, um, it's so powerful because 
even that day prior to me coming, I had been watching a show about uh, the supernatural power of God because I was curious. There was a part of me that was curious and I wanted to know, is this really real? Is Does God still heal? Does God still use prophets? All the things. I wanted to know more about it. Is this real? And I had never seen it. In all of my 20 plus years, I had never seen it, Apostle. So wow. when I came to Miracle Life, you were, it was during a Bible study and you were teaching on everything that I had a question about. So God was already preparing my heart and I didn't even know it. Yes. It was a complete God setup, 100%. And I'm sure so many people on the broadcast can not, tonight can relate to that, that they've had a complete setup from the Lord. <laughs> I yes. had no idea what I was walking into, but God knew. <laughs> yes, he did. So you, even that day during a Bible study, the Lord had used you to release prophetic words. And I can remember sitting in the congregation thinking to myself, Apostle, I hope he does not call me up there. <laughs> You were actually thinking that. I, I was thinking that. I said, if he calls me, I'm not going. And yes. you did. <laughs> the Lord singled me right on out. Like, come on in, here. And that was a Bible study. It was a Bible study. Wow. I thought I was safe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I went up and you gave me a prophetic word. Um, I still remember it to this day, Apostle, that the things that were no longer for me would begin to unravel and it would happen quickly. Um, and I can recall just in that time frame, I was a part of another church and the Lord was basically about to release me and everything that could go wrong after that service did go wrong. So the word that you released, I mean, it literally happened less than 24 hours later. Yeah. <laughs> and you knew nothing. And it's not like you tried to receive and do it. You didn't even know. You just heard it and just kind of went with it. You didn't know I what did. to do. Yeah. 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 And it's so funny because um, one of the ladies that introduced me to Miracle Life, I can remember calling her and I was so completely tore up like, oh, my world is just falling apart. And she said, remember the prophetic word. Yes. <laughs> so I said, OK. And um, even I can remember calling you and you were so gracious to take my call. And um, I remember you saying, everything is OK. This is the Lord's doing. And I just felt so at ease and so at peace. Yeah. And then after that, I, I came to Miracle Life and I've been there ever since. And it has just been absolutely mind blowing the things that God has done. It's amazing. So, and you were a part of the ministry for like maybe two years or so before you had your first what you would call visitation. Now you got filled with the Holy Spirit and so forth. Prior to that, you've been familiar with the things of the Spirit, taught the word of God in a way. You grew up in church, so you're already a woman of faith, but you really began to now go to a different level of intimacy and closeness with God. And then after, I mean, I think it was a full two years or longer, you had that first encounter with Jesus without getting into why, but just kind of, if you don't mind sharing that powerful experience with the Lord. Oh, wow. The first one. Wow. It's, it's just, even to this day, it gives me chills to think about that experience. Yes. Um, I think those are things in life that you just will never forget your first time encountering Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. My wow. God. Glory it to God. Was so powerful. So I remember um, you actually had prayed that the Lord would visit me. And that night I had a dream. Yeah. Because so, let me, let's talk about that for a moment. I remember because you had called, we were kind of going through some things and I prayed and I, in the prayer, I prophesied that the Lord was going to come to you. Right. And you had been a part of the ministry for two years. So that's not like that just happens, right? That was just go ahead. All right, go right ahead. <laughs> yes, sir. So then that night I had a dream and in the dream, it was as if I was almost looking at a movie. That's what it seemed like. And it was as if it was coming into full picture. So when it came into full picture and I could see everything, I saw this flaming sword. And then I saw the Lord on a white horse with a band of angelic beings with him. And it was like, they were coming. And when they were coming, apostle, they were coming with force. So yes. then they touched down. And I remember we were at this huge castle and there were all kinds of people and they were scattering around and around. What's going on? Trying to figure out who is this man. And so 
I remember re retreating. I ran into the castle because I was scared. I didn't, in the dream, I didn't know what was going on. And so I just remember everybody kind of huddled together in this place. And as soon as Jesus walked into the building, I remember the only one that would bow down was me. And Jesus said, bow down and worship me. But no one else would, but I did. So Jesus turned away from us and he began walking up the steps. And when he walked up the steps, I said, Jesus, I want to go with you. And he looked at me in such a loving way, my God. And he said, daughter, follow me. Wow. Those are the, those are the most precious words that he can ever say to someone. If people only knew the significance of those two words, follow me. It's a life changing experience. Just, you know, anybody else say, follow me. But when he says it, it's a life changing. Those two words change your life. Thank so you. Amazing. Lord. Praise yes. God. <laughs> so it's just been encounter after encounter after that. You know, my, my life is so changed. Um, even the things that I was struggling with at that point, um, two years after being at Miracle Life, I, it, it, it's almost as if it doesn't even exist anymore. Yes. And it's just so amazing to see the result of Jesus visiting you, the life yeah. of visitation, right? Uh, even just the impartation that, that happens through you. It's absolutely phenomenal and it's life changing. And not only has it changed my life, but it's changed the life of my son. And I'm seeing it change the life of my family members as well. You know, it's so powerful because people forget you're dealing with Jesus. You know, someone would say, well, what's the big deal? It's just a dream. Well, remember Solomon? Solomon was just a young man who would become king. And in a dream, the Lord visited him in a dream. And he, and he granted him wisdom. He went to sleep one way, had an encounter with Jesus, with the Lord in a dream and comes out of it with wisdom. He's not an ordinary man. That's the God of gods, the Lord of lords, Emmanuel. And, but yet he's a man and he comes to us by faith in our heart, but yet he can come because come to us in any way because of his resurrection, he transcends time, space, and matter. The resurrection, Think about it. Jesus is a resurrected being. He, like the Bible talks about uh, how Elijah was on a chariot and he went to heaven. But Elijah never tasted death. Jesus tasted death. He tasted something that no one else has ever done and came back forever as a resurrected being. See, even Lazarus was raised from the dead, but he wasn't a resurrected being. He died again, right? But Jesus rose victorious in all glory. So in his resurrection, he has moved into his place of dominion as he's God, but even as the God man, he has dominion. So dominion means dominion is greater than authority. Authority, you're subject to authority. You have limitations, but because of his dominion of resurrection, he has no limitations. So because of that, because of the Holy Spirit, he can visit us. He can reveal things to us. And I believe a lot of this great revelation and of, of, of relationship with the Lord, I believe, has been reserved until these last days. And that's the, the earth, as we know it, the world is in a tremendous shifting. And it's been going on since the 2000s, but 2020 was key. And the world as we know it, even technologically, it's going to continue to change. It's not people are not going to be able to stop it. It's changing. Either one of two things are going to happen. Either the Lord is going to come very soon, which he, he will, whatever, but soon is a relative term. But even if his if it's coming as a hundred years from now, the world as we know it will change. And it's already beginning. So this is so powerful. So even in light of that, anytime God is about to do something on these levels, he visits. During the time of Moses, God the Father visited it. During the time of Jesus, his son, God the Father visited. He spoke to him from a cloud. 
now in these last days. Amen. Some people call it the third day. There's, there's a teaching out there called the third day uh, revival. I don't know if I subscribe to all of it or not. That's not really the point. But in this hour, the father has come down. And, and that's why you're seeing spiritual activity on both camps, both darkness and the light of God. Spiritual activity is on the increase. So I am preparing the church as like a voice in the wilderness to be prepared and to speak to this so they won't miss or speak against what God is doing. Be careful how people put their mouth on what God is doing because it doesn't happen to you. Doesn't mean it's not so. There's a lot of things that happen to people that happen to me. It is, it, it is what it is because God is no respect of person. So this is so awesome, uh, Minister Cassandra, that God has, you know, shown you so many times. Now I'm, I, you know, I'm putting you on the spot, but that's fine. We, we we're bold about what Father is doing and what Abba's doing. Now, how? And then when he comes down, when he say visitations, there's different levels. There's open visions where he comes to you, and you can't tell the difference between real. But then there's dreams and there's inner visions, which you know it's in the spirit, it's spiritual, but it's still just as significant in power. So with all of that inclusive, what you've had. I don't know how many, I don't know if you might write them all down. I'm not sure, but how, what? You know, honestly, Apostle, I stopped writing at 70. <laughs> 70. I stopped keeping count. <laughs> so yes. I said, okay, you know, it just, because it happens so often uh, is what it feels like for me that I'm like, okay, Lord, all I know is that you're just coming. <laughs> yes. And let me tell you something about those that's watching. And, I, and this is me for those that's watching. You notice I've, I've been in ministry 30 years. But you see, even the way you're talking, when, when the Lord really processes you, you're holy, but you're not overly religious. Because sometimes that over-religious, overly churched mentality, some of that's cultural, some of that is pretense, some, some of that is a put on. It's, it's, an, it's a learned behavior. I'm not knocking everyone for certain things. Everyone flows a certain way. But when you really begin to get grounded in the Lord, there's a maturity, there's a, there's a realness to you and, and, and your righteousness and the sanctity and sanctification is not something you're striving for. It begins to sort of work through you and, and God gives you your personality back. He first you die and then he, then, then, then you got to go through that. And it's like, he resurrects your personality. It's you, but yet it's a new you. And that's how the Lord does it. He resurrects you, the inward man. He, you're born again, but he renews your mind. And it's, a, it's almost death and resurrection working in you. And he, and he that's, that's I with me. When I, I was sharing something with a pastor earlier, and he was we were talking about sitcoms and different shows that used to come on in the early 90s. And I said, I, never, I didn't see any of them because that's when the Lord was first visiting me. And I was so consecrated. I didn't do nothing. I didn't want to watch TV. I didn't. And that was good for a season. And I'm not saying we have moments of that. And I don't do a whole lot of that anyway, anyway. But anyway, my point is, is that. But then as the Lord continued to process me, right, there's a there's a practicality. There's a balance. See, uh, and, and I thank God, amen, that God is using you as example of visitation. Glory to God. Nobody like him. You know, I was going to share, and I'm going to share real quick. I'm just going to keep you on here because God is doing so good. And then I know people are being blessed, you know, by you. When let's talk about visitation. When God, for those that's watching, I'm gonna give some people maybe who are some uh, my Bible thumping people who who said this is great, possible. I mean, that's wonderful about all y'all experiences. But give me some word, dude. Okay, I'm gonna give you some word. When you go to Exodus chapter three, I won't read the whole thing because of time's sake. But in Exodus chapter three is the time when visitation started in the life of Moses, the ministry of visitation. And what you have to understand is what happens is if we go to Exodus three, verse number, oh, where do I want to start? To 13. And Moses said to God, indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me. And they say to me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. I am that I am. Now, this is so powerful. Now, uh, that you must understand the word of God. When he said, I am that I am, when, when the Lord uses that term, that expression of I am that I am, it means 
It's his name of revelation. It's, it's his name pertaining to manifestation. What was Moses seeing? He was seeing the glory of God manifested like fire in a burning bush. And in that expression of God, God gives him a name. I am that I am. Let me explain it in the natural. Someone say what they would say, hey, who are you talking to me? And I would say, well, I am Chad Collins. I, I'm about to reveal who I am. So God, when he says, I am that I am, there's a lot of et etymology and word study, but to understand the spirit of what he's saying, when he says, I am that I am, that's, he, that's the name of his manifest presence. That's, he's the I am. He's revealing himself in his glory. That's why when Jesus, when the, the, when the soldiers, centurion soldiers came to arrest him, they said, which one is Jesus? He says, I am. Now the, the English says, I am he, but he's italicized. He really says, I am. And when he says, I am, they all fall back. The Bible actually says it. They fall back like they're slain in the spirit. Why? Because he said, I am. That's, that's the name of his manifest presence. Wow. So, in, 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 so that's the name, that's the expression of his glory. So they fell out. Jesus said it this way, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am. In the midst is added. In the, in the Greek, in the original language, where two or three are gathered, I am. That's the expression of his manifest presence. It depicts his glory. So what he's telling Moses, my glory is so deep. You might want to turn something down over there. My glory is so deep and so powerful that it would take forever for me to try to explain it. I'm just, I am. I believe that Moses still would be sitting there right now. 4,000 years later, still he's still telling, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this. 4,000 years later, he still would be sitting there listening to who God is. Ain't that powerful? powerful? Jesus said, we're two or three together. There I am. Same expression that God said to Moses, the burning bush, the fire, symbolic or representation of the glory of God. Jesus is the glory of God bodily. Hallelujah. And why the glory? The glory, all the promises of God are expedited and manifested. Well, I don't need all that. See, some people say all that because really it disturbs them. It disturbs them because it, because it deals with your ego and your pride. Well, I love God too. I don't need all that. Well, I understand. You don't, you don't, there's a lot of things you don't need. But it doesn't take away from the fact that God offers more. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. Uh, so it's wow. amazing. Yeah, when you're sharing all your visitations, I want to give people a, a little synopsis of the word. I could take you all the way through scripture. Visitation is always even Abraham. We see that the Lord and two angels visit him. We see also Abraham when he when God cut the covenant, that burning light fire came down at the time of the con uh, uh, conception or inception of the covenant. We see that fire come down in Solomon. We see the fire come down on the day of Pentecost. All of that represents the glory of God. And now in these last days, he saved the best for last. He's coming back for a glorious church. And when he comes back for a glorious church, he reveals his glory. So there's been a buildup of great movements and shifting and revivals for such a time as this. How this is so glorious. That's powerful revelation apostle. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Now, we just got to continue to pray and I, that the pastors in this region would receive the ministry. They respect it, but they have to receive it. God gives certain people certain measures and assignment. You, someone can preach the same thing, but they don't have the authority to release it. So we got to pray that the pastors in this region, because other pastors in other regions are, are receiving it. We have to get the pastors and, and the leaders in this region to receive what Father's doing. And then God takes it from there. I'm just the point man, right? I, I, I have no power. I'm just the point man. I point you to it, help you start it, 
and then it's between you and Jesus. I don't control how many times he visits you, just like you. You've had, in some ways, more than I have. God is so glorious and so wonderful. He's no respected person. Now, I mean, you, I mean, it's been so powerful what the Lord has been doing in your life. And I thank mm -hmm. God for all the visitations, different things he shared with you. You know, and before I go, I'm going to do something. I'm going to put you on the spot, but you are a woman of God. I'm going to ask you in a moment to begin to pray for some people. There might be some women. And, and let me tell you something. I'm not going to limit you to that. It got nothing to do with just being living to women. There's some people. But I know some women are connecting with you. That's just how women, that's how y'all are. Y'all connect with each other. Mm -hmm. So there's some women that you can connect right now. But, I, but it ain't about women. If God give you something about men, whatever. But because right, the spirit of God is going to begin to move. Now, I want you to, in a moment, I want you to begin to pray for people that's watching. I was going to go into some more, but I had, I had a feeling this would happen uh, uh, because of the anointing and the glory that you've experienced. Now, I'm, I'm going to give you a moment that you want to say anything else about the glory and the presence and thank go right ahead. Hey, man. I mean, honestly, Apostle, this has been life transforming. And, you know, just in my day to day work, I see so many people that struggle with different mental illnesses or even just generational abuse, generational trauma. And, you know, to me, we have the answer here. <laughs> we have the answer. Amen. Yes. Let me say something so people that's watching, because everybody sees things different depending upon the background. They could be looking on here and say, who are these crazy people talking about Jesus visit? All right. Sometimes I, I, I talk about the elephant in the room because I'm not scared of the elephant. But tell people, I don't want to tell you where you work. What do you do for a living? All right. <laughs> so I am a licensed clinical social worker. So what does that mean? I practice therapy. I don't just practice therapy, though. I actually supervise a group of 10 mental health therapists from various different backgrounds. And we work every single day with families and with children's um, children, people from all ages, to be quite honest with you, that are struggling with mental health issues. Yeah. And don't you have a is it a do you have a double master's or a single master? I won't put I don't want to get it wrong. Correct me if I'm yeah. wrong. Yeah. So I actually I have one master's degree right now. However, I am working towards a doctoral degree. Doctoral degree. And something you're going to school for, not something you got off on, not something you got off the internet. Praise the Lord. Right. <laughs> and actually, Apostle, I was going to work towards a double master's. However, you know, from a conversation that you and I had, you told me, why not shoot for the stars? Go over that, right? So yes. I said, you know what? Let me reconsider this. And that's when I started pursuing my doctoral program. So I actually have classes right now. <laughs> Look at God. Now, I want people who are watching this. Someone with her background, education, it doesn't mean Jesus visiting her. This ain't just for whoever's open to the Lord. Amen. And, 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 and God is working on her. That's the things we're discussing. God's going to use her in that field in a new way. We, we're going to make it a special way. I'm telling you, God's going to do some things. I'm going to get into that. But God is going to be doing some supernatural things. I'm believing God. And those that's watching right now, you need to be a part of the ministry. You need to get connected you need to know she leads. She's one of the leaders on one of our prayer calls on Mondays. It's so powerful. We didn't think about it to bring the information. I would have had that. We were just so excited about the visitation. But we have an outreach prayer ministry on Mondays that you can call from anywhere in the United States and hook up to the call. It's powerful. It's a prophetic prayer call. Amen. With her uh, and two other women who are in our ministry. It's awesome. There's nobody like Jesus. What I want you to do, Cassandra, there's some people watching. And I want you to begin to pray. And I want you to believe God. Matter of fact, I feel led. That's just, I'm going to start praying. And then we're just going to let the Holy Spirit move. I, I, just, I just saw the Lord kind of check me on that. So let's begin to pray. But I want you to be ready and let, and, and let God use your spirit. Father, we thank you tonight for your glory, for your presence. There's people watching all over the world. There are people in this region. Father, first of all, we thank you for your divine revelation. Holy Spirit, confirm the truth of your word tonight, the truth of the testimony. Father, that we lie not, nor do we exaggerate. It's simply your will and your word in action. Father, give people eyes to see and hearts to receive the engrafted word of God. Father, let the pastors and the shepherds and the leaders in this region, in this United States and in the world, prepare their hearts and open their minds quickly for this move of visitation. Jesus, as the word says, come quickly for there's nobody like you. I thank you, Lord, that the people are watching, that their hearts are open. We give you praise, Father. And we thank you, Jesus. We yield to you. We minister to you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory. 
There's nobody like you, Jesus. Glory to God. There's a man that's watching right now. You've been having chest pains right in the middle of your chest. I just saw it. I don't know who you are, but I know you are a male. I saw a, 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 a man that's a male. God, place, place your hand on your chest. The Lord is healing you now. And Jesus' glory is one of wonderful things. That's just the prophetic gift to see in the spirit. God brings supernatural wisdom, a word of knowledge. Thank you, Father. Now, Sister Cassandra, be led. If, if God doesn't give you anything, that's fine. Don't force anything. But go ahead and begin to pray and as the Lord leads you. Hallelujah. Thank Father, you, Father. Thank you for this day. Hallelujah. We lift up your name. We declare Shout that there is none greater than you, O oh great God. We glorify you, Father. Hallelujah. And we give you praise. Even as I begin to pray, Apostle, I just begin to pick up in my spirit. Hallelujah. That there's someone that's dealing with emotional trauma. Yeah. My God, even from childhood, my God. Thank you, we come against the assignment of the enemy to bring about generational curses. We break it. Today, we declare generational blessings be your portion. The Lord is calling you out right now. He is singling you out to be the change in your family. My God, even as I, I, I begin to say that, Apostle, I, I sense that there's a lady who's uh, uh, affiliated with someone on this broadcast. Uh, my God, God has been favoring her and sparing her life. But again, he's drawing her closer. He's telling her to come closer to him. Yeah, and there's there's someone, um, apostle, who is in need of, of wisdom to make a certain decision they don't have peace about. So we pray for peace right now. For Thank you, you, Jesus. The peace that surpasses all understanding. We declare that wisdom of the Lord be your portion on Hallelujah. Today. God, I thank you that you are restoring minds, God. I thank you, Lord, that you are bringing a peace that surpasses all understanding. Hallelujah. God, I, I sense right now in my spirit, Apostle, um, that there's extreme um, chaos is, is the word that I'm, I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit, the word chaos in families. So we come against that assignment right yes. now that would come to divide and conquer families in this season and even marriages. I see that. My God, we declare and decree that the, the blood of Jesus Christ is against you. We declare that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. My God, we declare and decree that the Lord is loosing angels right now in this moment to do the work of the Lord. I thank you, mighty Holy Ghost. You are moving in this atmosphere. My God, I thank you, Lord, for thank divine you protection. I, I see the sword of the spirit come forth, apostle. Hallelujah. And I thank you, Lord, that your word, uh, hallelujah, will prevail on this broadcast on tonight. God, we bless you and we declare that there is none greater than you, mighty King Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. My <laughs> God. See the flow. Hallelujah. You know, those is watching, ladies in particular is watching, This is a product of the word of the Lord. And I tell people in this region and in this, you need to get to the house and get under the training. Now, I'm not, I don't I don't train like some of the other prophetic. I'm, I, I believe in the word. I believe in discipline, all these different things. But you see the fruit of it. God is doing some great things. And this woman of God, we see most of you, some of you in ministry don't even know, don't know her outside. But I'm telling you, there's some great gifting that's happening in this house. God is preparing this last day ministry. This is a time of visitation. People being delivered, people being healed. And God has mandated on my life. I've had several dreams from the Lord, supernatural, about raising and training people in the prophetic. I don't just say that. I don't because that there, there's something God has gave me to do that. My God. Hallelujah. Looks like we may have lost Miss Cassandra Minister Cassandra. She finished praying, and I believe her screen. They locked up older. Isn't that powerful? Perfect timing. She finished. Amen. Maybe she'll log back in in a moment. We'll bring her back. But I thank God for what he's doing. Hallelujah. That's nobody like Jesus. Glory to God. I believe my mind is still streaming. Okay. Let me listen to it. Make sure we're okay. Yes. Now, now again, make sure 
that you let us know what happened. I want your testimonies to inbox us, send us emails to the ministry. I'm telling you, God is moving supernatural. I thank God for Minister Cassandra. I think she's back now. Looks like she may have got back on. Let me see if I can bring her back on here real quick. Ah, no, she's still not there yet. That's okay. But we just thank God for the Father. The Spirit of God moves supernaturally. If you receive the blessing or a breakthrough or the word of God from you, I want you to put in the comments, I received that was for me. I received that was for me. Now, I don't know what window you're watching. We're simulcasting through about, uh, I think it's 10 to 12 platforms. I, I may have said I, I, somewhere between 10 and 12. I don't know how exact count. I, I believe I believe it's 12 or maybe it's 10. Anywhere from 10 to 12, we're streaming right now. So again, I'm not, not sure where you're watching. You may be watching on YouTube. We thank God for you. Those just watching in the New York, New Jersey area, remember we'll be up there. I'm excited. It's going to be powerful. Make sure you get ready. Fast, do whatever. And get with your pastor what, what needs to happen. We're excited about that. Pastor uh, uh, Evans Pierre, I mean, him and First Lady, we're going to be there. I'm telling you, it's going to be, it's going to be bananas. Amen. It's going to be so powerful. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to show you some information about our upcoming uh, services in New Jersey. Also show you a little bit of information about Miracle Life, our local ministry. Amen. So I'll be right back in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. My friend there in the brown shirt. Can I pray with you? Yes. I've never, I don't know if you've ever been here. Have you ever been here before? Don't come, sir. You... Edison, New Jersey. I pray that the Lord would reveal something to me that would be a blessing to you. A time of visitation coming to a city near you. I see people playing tennis, but they're playing on the clay court. You come from a place called Clay, Clay, Kentucky. Uh, Lift your hands. <laughs> come experience the dynamic ministry of Apostle Chad Collins. Touch. We lose that anointing. Glory encounter services. Saturday, October 15th, 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. services. Sunday, October 16th, 10, 15 a.m. service. Y'all see the shut my shadow right there? It becomes tangible at times, Lord. We bless you. That's power right there. Look at that. Glory encounter services at the Sheraton Hotel, 125, Rarity. Center Parkway. My God. Don't miss your time of visitation. Set your schedule and tune into the Apostle Chad Collins live calling broadcast. Hello, caller. You on the line with Apostle Chad Collins? How may I pray with you tonight? Thursday nights, 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central Standard Time. Let's go and pick your praise God with me. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. my God. Thank you, Jesus. To reach Apostle Chad Collins, dial 270-257-4599. The call-in show will broadcast exclusively on the Chad Collins Ministries Facebook page and the Apostle Chad Collins Miracle Life YouTube channel. Hallelujah. Thank Those that's watching, you need to give Jesus praise. My God, it never gets common. Join us live. Praise God. Don't miss the call-in show. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be extraordinary, I'm telling you. Again, we're in our new administrative building. We've acquired it. We expanded our location in the Bowling Green. So at this point, at this point, we have three properties that we're doing. God is growing, expanding the ministry. I thank God for those of your obedience. God has basically built, Abba has built Miracle Life, this ministry from the ground up. Literally, we have no outside affiliation. It's been from the ground up. And we're now, if you see now, there's not a whole lot going on on the walls and so forth. It looks a little plain, but I'm in our new administrative building. So we have actually two uh, properties in the Bowling Green location. And we have a property uh, a church and property in the Louisville location. So again, I'm sure Miracle Life, our family, is so excited. And that's because of many of you that have sown into this ministry. It's been a blessing to us. I and mean, it's been supernatural. 
I mean, everything has come from you sowing. And, 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 and guess what? It's preparing us to expand the kingdom of God. The people's souls may be saved. People get delivered, healed, experience the new life that wins, the supernatural uh, life of the spirit. That's what it's about, the New Testament life of the spirit. That's what we are about. Get to the house. Join us Sundays. I need everybody, whether you are a guest, visitor, stranger, it doesn't matter your background. You come from the mountains, from the valleys, from the hills, from the streets. You need to get to Miracle Life in Louisville, Kentucky and Bowling Green, Kentucky. It's exciting. God is doing tremendous thing. You heard from Minister Cassandra, all the visitations from Jesus that she's had. We've had many people. Matter of fact, I may start highlighting more. We've had dozens of people, no exaggeration, where this is happening and it is life changing. I'm telling you, it's supernatural. I know you love Jesus and so do I. So tonight, before we get off here, I always want to get an opportunity to sow into the ministry. I want you to do that into our cash app tonight. I'm going to give you that information. I'm going to show you that information, how you can sow. There are some of you, every time we come on, you sow and you are a blessing and God is blessing you. Don't listen to the critics or the naysayers. This is God's, I call it kingdom economics. Give and it shall be given unto you. Yes, work, be diligent, be faithful to your job, whatever God has for you, but he is your source. All those things are resources, resource, but God is your source. The word Abba in its truest meaning, in its purest word form, it means source. He's the source of all things. I want you to sow tonight into our cash app. I'm gonna show that information don't wait. Whatever God lays upon your heart, $20, 50 100 whatever, Father, I want you to come in agreement and I want you to believe God for supernatural financial breakthrough or that God will continuously sustain you even in a time of famine or inflation. I'm believing God for that. He's done it for me. I know he's going to do it for you. Well, until next time, we are so blessed. Remember, we just showed you about the call-in show. It's the most talked about broadcast, I believe, in this region where I take live calls, interpret dreams, pray for the sick, minister to the sick, bring deliverance. So many things happening in real time. Well, until that time, God bless you. I'm Apostle Chad Collins. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to show you how you can give tonight. God bless you. We'll see you real soon. Give today to this supernatural ministry. Dollar sign, Apostle Chad Collins. Send your offering to Cash App. Dollar sign, Apostle Chad Collins. Partner with this dynamic supernatural ministry. You can sow this very day. Dollar sign, Apostle Chad Collins. Thank you for supporting this worldwide ministry.